Hello friends, my name is Paresh and you're watching Tech Dynamics. In this video, we are going to discuss the types of entities available in Dynamics 365. So keep watching and stay tuned. Now there are three types of entities available in Dynamics 365, namely business or system entities, activity entities and custom entities. Now, when we talk about business or system entities, these are entities which are available by default when you deploy Dynamics 365. So these are out of the box entities like accounts, contacts, opportunities, cases, etc. And some of these entity entities cannot be modified. So they cannot be deleted and locked by managed solutions. For example, if you have created a minus solution uh, wherein you have also involved the system entities, you have exported it and imported into a separate environment, then these system entities cannot be locked. That is, you can go ahead and customize these entities. When we talk about activity entities, uh, these are associated with multiple business records. For example, emails, tasks, appointments, etc. And uh, you can go ahead and create new activity entities um, if you like. Uh, when we talk about custom entities, these are created either by a customizer, system administrator or a consultant in order to extend the functionality of Dynamics 365. Now, the custom entities can also be created when you're importing a managed or an unmanaged solution. And these custom entities can be changed or can be deleted. But the important point to note over here is that uh, if you're trying to delete an entity, you should make sure that there are no dependencies uh, which are associated with that particular entity. Otherwise, it will just not delete. So let's just go ahead and have a look in Dynamics 365. All right, so here we are in our solution. Let's just have a look at the system entity. So as we discussed earlier as well in our previous videos that this account, for example, is, uh, is a system entity because it comes by default uh, when you deploy Dynamics 365. So now if you go ahead and view the properties of the account, you will see that there are many property fields available over here. You can um, actually enable or disable some of the properties but like uh, there are many properties which have like a plus sign you need to be careful for them because once you enable them you cannot disable them so you have to make sure that you actually need that functionality to be enabled so these are the system entities and um, uh, when you include these as a part of your managed solution, you cannot change uh, the properties of uh, a system entity. So if I go uh, select account and click on manage properties, you will see that I cannot um, uh, change the managed properties of this. So uh, if you import this as a part of your managed solution, you will always be able to customize the system entities. Now, uh, coming on to the activity entities. So um, to have a good example, let me just add an existing, um, for example, uh, we can select um, email, uh, which is an activity entity. Click on finish. And if I select this entity over here, you will see that there are certain properties, for example, define as activity entity and display, display in activity menu. So if this field is enabled, that means that it is an activity entity. And you can always go ahead and create your own activity entities and uh, select this checkbox to make it an activity entity. And again, there are many other properties that you can go ahead and define and also make them available in particular areas as well. And as far as the custom entities are concerned, um, we have over here some custom entities and for which you can obviously change the manage properties. You can make sure that they, they are customizable or not, or you can just change the individual managed properties over here. And if you go to uh, the other, and if you go to the general settings over here, again, you have um, all the settings where you can just define the display name, approval name, uh, and the name. And uh, also you can go to the primary field and define uh, a primary field for that particular entity. So, um, once you define the primary field, um, you know, and we have our custom entities over here. Now let me just go ahead and create a new custom entity because I just want to show you one more thing. Uh, let's say 
and I define a leave application custom entity. Let me define a program. So over here I have um, selected, um, uh, so over here I've defined a new activity. <sighs> So over here, I've defined a new entity. Now I have not saved it yet. Now there is one more section called primary field. So I can define a primary field over here and you need to make sure that you define it correctly because once you save it, you cannot change it. So over here by default, you know, if there is um, a name, you can uh, define that name or you can just say, okay, I want to make it an ID over here which is a unique identifier and the new let's say application id and then there are certain field requirements now you can make sure you can make it as a business required which is like mandatory or business recommended recommended which is like not mandatory but it would be good to have and then there's an optional so uh, since it's an id field i will make sure that it is business required because you obviously require that and then you have the data type which is uh, by default always single line of text and then you have a format and maximum length and you can go ahead and also define the description over here and once you do that and for example if you click on save and once it is saved if you go to the primary field again you will see that you are not able to change the primary field over here so you need to make sure that you define the primary field uh, correctly if you want a separate primary field otherwise whenever you create an entity the name field is always defined as a default primary field over there so uh, this is all about uh, the system entity the custom entity and the activity entity so if you go to accounts for example and select a particular account then if you want to see the activities you can click on related and click on activities so all the associated activities will be displayed over here in this page or you can add new activities like tasks fax phone calls uh, email whatever is associated with that particular account so this is how you can view the activities uh, over here so i hope this gives you an idea what are the different types of entities available in dynamics 365 and how you can make use of it of course there are many other things related to it that we are going to discuss in upcoming videos so why don't you go ahead and try it out for yourself thank you for watching this video if you like the video please give it a big thumbs up do share your comments and do not forget to subscribe to channel tech dynamics bye bye